Hi YouTube, this is the start of a Slimer that I probably started it about a year, year and a half ago. It's been sat in my studio ever since. Um, you can see here it's just been made from a whole load of kind of screwed up carrier bags actually. Uh, and they've been wrapped with sellotape. And then I've just gone over this whole kind of thing with um, a layer of um, kitchen paper and super PVA glue. And I've only literally just put one layer on, so you can see like it's still really quite soft and squidgy. Uh, it needs so much more doing to it, but this was just to give me my overall shape. You can see on his arm here, there's even a little tear because it was only just one layer of the kitchen paper. I'm just going to flip this over and just show you underneath. So you can see here very clearly, it's just literally a whole load of screwed up carrier bags. Um, and then a layer of sellotape. So this bit here that you're seeing that's all clear hasn't even got the layer of um, kitchen paper on it yet. So the first thing I did was his upper lip. And this is just done with aluminium foil, just squashed together, just to get the rough overall shape, um, pushed on, and then again you can see I've just gone over with the layer of kitchen paper and super PVA glue to stick it on. I can actually show you the lower lip here, just made with the aluminium foil again, all crushed up, just to give that rough overall shape. And here it is attached with the PVA glue and the kitchen paper, um, nice and firm. This is still wet, so the glue is still white. Obviously, it dries a bit clearer. Um, here's a nose. Again, just made out of the aluminium foil. It's really nice working with aluminium foil. It's easy to shape, uh, especially just to get a rough shape. You can get that on. You can always add extra bits later with the kitchen paper. Here's an eyebrow ridge. So yeah, I've made a couple of those ready to go on. Uh, and again, now I've just got to stick them on. So at this point, he was really reminding me of that hideous snowman from that awful film, Frozen. So I just needed to get past this stage and start making him look more like Slimer. So I thought some massive cheeks would help. Um, again, with the aluminium foil, nicely squashed into shape. And um, these are really quite firm as well. You can really push the aluminium foil, make them nice and solid. Um, and later on I'll obviously coat these and I'll make the cheeks bigger as well because they extend backwards uh, onto the um, back of the head as well. This is with the cheeks coated with the kitchen paper and PVA glue. Um, obviously your sculpts quite often will go through a lot of stages where you're not that happy with them. Um, but as long as you can keep thinking that every bit that you add is going to make it better and better, um, that's what you've got to do. You've just got to work through it. Next I did a couple of chin folds, exactly the same way I did the lower lip, you know, just with this small bit underneath his lower lip and then a much larger fold um, and these will obviously be coated again in a second. Like this. Every time you add a layer of the kitchen paper and PVA glue, it obviously makes it look like it's much more part of his body. I've also added more to the cheeks. Do you remember I said you've got to extend them back onto the head? So his cheeks are much larger than you think. Um, incidentally, I'm working from reference material of Slimer from lots of different sources. Mainly, there's a big life-size Slimer you can buy by HCG, and it's absolutely brilliant. That's the one that I like the most, um, but the only thing is that it costs sort of a couple of thousand pounds or more. Um, so I'm just making my own kind of smaller version of him. Um, but I'm also using reference material from the movie, uh, just stills from... Um, Ghostbusters and also I'm using just things like you know have a water slide transfer that I got in shreddies and things like that just little things um, that I want to kind of get into this model if I can so this is him with an extra fold added um, you can see he's starting to uh, get the shape a lot more I've got to put like a sort of a bottom on him um, that'll help as well he has this kind of um, big lump that comes out the back Right, this is with the tongue added, and I've also made a load of teeth. Now, I've made these out of milliput. Um, if you haven't used milliput before, it's a two-part putty. You mix the two parts together, and it starts to set, and it sets rock hard in about four hours. So you can shape the teeth like this. This is the first um, kind of rough shape of the teeth, if you like. And then what I'll do is I'll go in, I quite often do this, I make them kind of a little bit larger than they need to be and then I come in and I kind of sand them or you know I use my Dremel drill to kind of sand down surfaces and things for a bit of refinement afterwards but the molders here are looking pretty good it's just the other teeth are just a little bit too thick so these are the teeth after a little bit of refinement 
like I say, use my Dremel drill and just you can use like grinding attachments or sanding attachments and all I've done basically is just sand away a lot of the back edge of the teeth and it just makes them have this more kind of like chiseled look to them they're still quite big and fat these teeth but they need to be really I mean um, he has these kind of quite cartoon like teeth in a way so it doesn't matter that they're oversized you can see I've also drilled holes in the ends of all of these teeth and then what I'm going to do is um, just use some skewers and I'm going to cut little pegs to go into these holes uh, and then I'll be able to push those up into the gums. So I'll just show you the skewers that I'm going to be using. They're basically kebab skewers, you know, that you buy for barbecuing. The only thing you've got to make sure, of course, is that you drill a hole that is the right width for pushing the um, skewers up into. And then I just use a pair of wire cutters to cut them down to size. So this is what they look like with the peg sticking out. You can see how much peg that I've left on there to push up into the gums, quite a bit really. So with the gums, imagine making two long sausages, one for the upper and one for the lower gums, and then just um, shaping them a little bit and then pushing the teeth pegs up into them. Uh, this is what you get. It happens really quite quickly, quicker than you think, and it gives an amazing kind of result. Um, you can see here I've made um, the eyes, a couple of balls, and I've also just bent some wire into the shape of the hands. Um, this just gives me a framework, and it also means when you put milliput over these, um, they're going to be much firmer if they've got a bit of wire inside them. Here you can see that I've used milliput again for the details of the sort of nose bridge uh, between the eyebrow ridges, uh, and also just the little wrinkles at the uh, sides there of the uh, eyebrow ridges as well. Um, it's really nice with milliput, you know, you can get your main shape of your kind of figure done and then you can use milliput for all the nice little details, all the refining bits. So here you can see I've just roughed out the shapes of the hands um, very roughly at the moment, just literally just squashed milliput on really quickly. Um, just to give these shapes and at the moment they're just on the bags that um, the milliput comes in uh, just to stop the milliput from sticking to my plate basically. So at this point I just paused to make a base so I cut two circles out of plywood and I had this um, pine pole that I used to go in the middle and I just screwed that in, drilled a couple of holes, screwed that on um, and then glued the slimer on top of it. Um, and then I'm going to actually like add more at the bottom of Slimer to cover up that flat uh, plywood base that he's kind of perched on. So you won't see that bit at the end. And then eventually I'll paint this whole pole black uh, and the base as well. And that will kind of help it kind of fade into the background. So here you can see I've added that more of the um, tin foil and a little bit more of the um, PVA glue and uh, kitchen paper just to cover that up that sticks it firmly onto that uh, plywood circle and then I'll keep building this up until he's much more kind of slimer shaped at the bottom here lots of kind of rounding to do at the bottom so this large bit of aluminium foil this is his bottom or his uh, sort of blunt tail if you like I suppose it's going to go on the back here and uh, I'll stick this on with some glue and then kitchen paper over the top of it again. So you can see his overall shape here has changed quite dramatically. You've got much more at the bottom. He's much more rounded off there. And then obviously he's got his um, bottom on as well. Um, so he's getting much more slimy shape. But there's quite a few more folds to add to the front yet. Um, and the back as well. There's loads more to kind of put on the back. Right, so we have one much larger fold at the front here, and then I've done smaller folds right where it meets the arm. Just little ones here. There's also kind of big lumps underneath the arm here as well. That helps, helps the overall shape. Um, I've also got these um, bits going around the back. I'll show you those more in a minute. Um, more milliput here looks to form these kind of little curves at the top of each fold where it joins onto this big kind of cheek mass here. Um, I've stuck the eyes on. Um, I'm going to have to put eyelids on later as well, but that's the, um, the eyes in position. Uh, you can see he's starting to look much more like how I wanted him to. 
much more slimer shaped. At this point, I'm just getting really excited about painting him, like I always do. And then that quite often makes me rush at the end. And I was determined not to rush too much on this one because I really wanted to kind of do the hands well and that kind of thing. Okay, so here you can see the back. It's kind of like you've got this fold on the back of his head. Um, and then you've got these kind of big sort of back muscles. Quite interesting shapes here. Um, they look a bit strange at the moment, but when they're painted, they're going to look really great, I think. And then you've got this um, other kind of back fold uh, at the bottom there as well. Okay, this is a technique that I love for doing hands. I did it on my Rancor monster as well. Um, so you basically you just get those um, skewers again, cut them down. And if you look at my hand here, can you see all these tendons? You can see them standing out here. Um, that's what we're creating basically on the hand. You can see some here from my thumb as well. Um, so I've just stuck them on, you cut them to size. Obviously they've got to be, you know, roughly the right size for each um, digit that you're doing. Uh, you can see I've done it here on the other side as well. Just a little bit of super PVA glue to stick them on. I used a hairdryer as well to make it quicker to get them to um, stay in position. And then we go over the top of this with kitchen paper and PVA glue. And that's really important. Obviously if you just left them as they were, uh, it wouldn't look very good. But here you can see, I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, you get your bit of kitchen paper and this uh, brush here is completely kind of saturated with PVA glue. And then you just put it on and you work from one side across. Uh, and what happens is obviously the kitchen paper just um, sticks onto the skewers and you get these lovely um, folds and it, it really does look kind of skin like at the end it, and it really looks like the tendons are underneath the skin so it's a sort of a, a great little trick and it's really quite quick to do as you can see here it doesn't take long at all to get those skewers covered and uh, I think it, it makes hands look much more impressive if you can get these tendons on Obviously they get even better as well once you paint the hands, but um, you can see even at this stage where it's just white still, uh, it still starts to look really good. Okay, next on the hands I go back to my milliput and I just make these kind of pad shapes. And you make them individually and then just use a tool like this to kind of go in wherever the lines are just to smooth them all in a little bit. Um, you can add extra little kind of things like um, folds like flaps of skin and that kind of thing and you can uh, add I added like little curves underneath and little wrinkles and things like that into the wrist that kind of thing and it just makes the hands start to look a little little bit more realistic I then added some knuckles which is basically just little ovals of milliput and you smooth in all the edges and then I used that same tool that I showed you before just to push the lines in to give the sort of wrinkle effect and make it look much more skin like. You can see I've added some milliput where the tendons meet the hand as well. That just smooths it in a little bit more. Um, and you can see I've added some tendons on the arms as well. I remember being really pleased at this point with how the hands were starting to look. Um, I put little um, bumps underneath each finger as well uh, and that helped just to give some shape to the fingers. I'd just like to thank Milliput again for sponsoring this channel and sending me occasional batches of free Milliput. It really helps with my sculpting. And I just want to say that if you haven't tried Milliput before, you should go out and get yourself some because it is really good stuff. Here you can see I've done the eyelids. Um, I've worked on his upper lip and I've just put some wrinkles along the edges. Um, same on the lower lip. Whenever you're pushing in wrinkles like this, it's a good idea to put like a sort of a bag or something over the top of the milliput and then kind of push your lines um, down into it um, through the bag and then lift the bag off afterwards. It gives you a much kind of cleaner line into the milliput, makes for some really good wrinkles. You can see I've put some kind of muscles on his arms. That makes the arms look a lot more kind of realistic as well. Uh, a couple of folds as well at the um, tops of the arms. That just helps where it meets the body. So at this point I was starting to get really excited because I knew all the hard work was done 
and I was just about to be able to start painting, which is my favourite bit of the whole sculpt. I started by painting the whole of him in this flat green. Um, this is leaf green. I'm using System 3 acrylic paints for all of the painting apart from any airbrushing that I do. When I do my airbrushing, I use Liquitex uh, acrylic inks instead. I obviously knew that just by giving him a coat of green paint, he would instantly start looking more like Slimer. But this particular leaf green was just the perfect one. It's sort of not quite fluorescent green, but it's very, very vibrant. Um, I'll just show you it here so you can see if you're um, wanting to paint Slimer yourself. This I recommend this colour. It's a really good kind of base colour. Yeah, it really makes him stand out already, so I was really happy at this point. Next I did the base colour on his tongue and his gums. So this is just a mix of crimson and yellow ochre. There'll be a lot more kind of brighter colours added onto the top of this. This is just the darker base colour. You can see here, like I've got little patches of it all over the teeth and things because I painted it on really quite roughly to start with. That doesn't matter at all because I'll be refining all these edges later where it meets the lips and things. Uh, and also I'll be painting the teeth so I can paint over the top of uh, any messy bits that I've done at this point. Next I airbrushed him and then I painted the base and the pole black. And that really makes him look more like he's kind of floating. Um, so with the airbrushing what I've done is I've sprayed a much darker green into all of the shadowy areas. So all the deep places. So if you have a look like underneath his nose, in his kind of eye sockets. Uh, and then like along the edges of the cheeks, underneath, and then into all of those kind of folds, a much darker green. Um, and this, I think this makes him look much more like the one in the movie. And I'm really pleased with how this ended up looking. Um, you can see here, look into all of these folds. And this was actually really easy to do and really quick to do. Um, and then I've used a much brighter green. It's much more of a sort of a yellowy green on all of the higher areas. So basically wherever you think like light would hit him naturally um, from above, you can spray the um, lighter colours. And that again really kind of makes him look a lot more kind of three dimensional. Um, and I was really pleased with this as well. You can see even on these kind of little pads and things on the hand, I've just sprayed little bits here and there um, of brightness onto it. And uh, yeah, he really stands out a lot more now. Next I did a nice bright cream base colour on the teeth. This is just a mix of yellow ochre and white and it gives this nice kind of solid look over all the teeth. I've left a little gap where it meets the gums so there's still a bit of the red gum colour on the edges of the teeth. That doesn't matter at all because I'm going to be adding some staining to the teeth so I can tidy it up at that point. So here you can see the teeth look much more realistic with a bit of staining on them. So the stain is made with a mix of um, yellow ochre and burnt umber. And you can see I've just gone basically around the edges. Um, also on the tongue and the gums, I've used a much brighter, lighter pink colour um, as highlights. But yeah, you can see in these sort of molars and along all these edges here, the stain has just been added and kind of faded in. I also did a wash of the original red colour around the lips to kind of fade the line of the gums into the lips and that I think has worked really well. With the eyes here I've just done that same cream colour that I used for the teeth as the base colour for the eyes. Next came the detailing on the eyes. So it's basically just uh, red irises and then I've gone in with black pupils um, black around the edges of the irises and I've kind of softened those as well just to fade them in a little bit and then around the edges of the whole kind of eyeballs you've just got like red um, fading from the corners inwards and then some really dark red in the very corners just to kind of make them pop a little bit and I think this like makes such a difference to the overall look of him Right, just as a finishing touch, I wanted to make him some fingernails and I was searching around thinking what should I make them out of and I get through a lot of these mealworms because I've got a pet armadillo and he eats a tub of these mealworms for breakfast every morning. So I thought one of these lids would be ideal. It's quite tough plastic so I cut through and I cut out 10 little fingernails and here they are, look, just little shapes like this 
um, you can just about make them out here and then I'll just stick these onto his fingers and then paint them. So this is how he's turned out and I'm super chuffed with this one. He's just so kind of bold looking that I think he's going to look great down in the studio amongst all my other creatures and things. Um, check out my other videos if you haven't seen them already. Um, I've made so many kind of uh, really cool movie creatures and things. They're mainly all the ones from kind of 80s movies are the ones that I like the most. Like all the really weird things like gremlins and critters and ghoulies and uh, like Chet from Weird Science. Um, the alien from Terror Vision. All those kinds of things. All the sort of mutants from Basket Case. Um, I've done uh, Harry the Bigfoot. Um, I've done a Graboid from Tremors, all kinds of things. So check those out if you get a chance. Um, hit subscribe to see anything that I do in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.